begins with the dusting of pollen, or perhaps a pinch of pepper. For some, a simple glance at the sun can trigger a desperate dash for a tissue. This is, of course, a sneeze, an act that was once believed to be the explosive release of our very soul. And when viewed in the right light, a sneeze can take on a whole new dimension. Um, I mean, if you forget the fact that it is a sneeze, it's actually a pretty, pretty beautiful process. Yeah, I, I think that they're all quite beautiful, actually. <laughs> Dr. Lydia Bariba is an assistant professor at MIT and a researcher of applied mathematics. And actually, it's really the new frontier to try to use more physics and mathematics to try to understand biological problems. Problems such as how diseases spread. We have a lot of work that is done at the cellular level, so inter interactions between cells, viruses, and, and tissues. And then a lot of work that is done at the population level, looking at average behaviors or using large statistical models. To predict rates of infection or mortality. But it turns out there's actually very little research into modeling that moment when my germs become your germs. There is no history of physical studies that really examine these problems of what is really contact and transmission and, and get the physical picture right to describe what's happening when you're actually sneezing. And so thinking about all these things, that's when I realized actually fluid mechanics could help because when you think about it, a, a sneeze or a cough is, um, is obviously fluid. With the help of an MIT colleague, Dr. John Bush, Dr. Bariba set about quantifying the physics of sneezes and coughs. If you saw someone sneeze with the naked eye, you would see drops flying out, and they go at whatever their initial speed is, and that determines their range. So in particular, that large drops go farther than small drops. Basically, there was no consideration whatsoever of the gas phase. They call this the multi-phased cloud. It is really to try to highlight the fact that it's not just droplets being emitted, but there are really these background turbulent, um, hot and moist air that is swirling around, advecting these droplets further away. And to find out how important this cloud is to the spread of diseases, Dr. Bariba needed to visualize sneezes and coughs in their finest detail. You need to basically have a camera that is uh, not as light sensitive, so basically black and white camera, and then we illuminated the droplets so that the scattered light from the droplets would be projected to the camera. So you have an individual s uh, standing there, sneezing, and, and then you laugh a lot. <laughs> <laughs> sneeze after sneeze, Dr. Bariba collected data, which she could then use to model the act. So the analysis relies on um, image processing techniques and algorithms that are, have to be developed uh, to really track both the cloud and the droplet trajectories. Turns out, we grossly underestimated the effect of the multi-phased cloud. You think of the cloud as being turbulent, that is a very disordered, uh, vigorous motion. Um, if characteristic speed in that cloud is larger than its settling speed, then it will be dominated more by that internal cloud motion than by its settling speed. Translation? The smaller uh, drops go much further than the large drops. Because the cloud keeps them afloat. And right now, the finding shows that these clouds, particularly under usual conditions of temperature and buoyancy, uh, has a tendency to go higher in in the room and get sucked into the ventilation system. I could be in this end of the building and somebody could be in contact with my pathogens through infiltration in the ventilation system without me actually meeting that person. It's a little disturbing, no? I am definitely more aware <laughs> of, uh, of sneezers and coughers all around. But it, it does definitely impact the sort of design of places where pathogen transport is critical, particularly, again, hospitals, classrooms, and uh, airplanes. And like all good research should do, a stream of questions flows from this new model of sneezing. If, for example, we were to change the ambient conditions indoor, temperature or moisture, by how much would we extend the horizontal versus vertical range of the cloud? Once you have an individual that is sick, what happens and how is that different? And then by adding obstacles, such as an elbow or a tissue, now we can also assess their effect. However, Dr. Bariba and Dr. Bush have proven once and for all that math doesn't need to be a dry subject. And then people aren't really aware of what the applications are, but if you actually use it for describing physical systems, you realize well, what a powerful tool it is. For Science Friday, I'm Luke Groskin.